All right, we are live. So, ready? I am okay. Ready. It's nine o'clock. Uh, call the meeting to order. This meeting and all other meetings of this committee are open to the public. Proper notice has been posted and given to the media in accordance with Wisconsin statutes so that the citizenry may be aware of the time, place, and agenda of this meeting. Uh, roll call shows that we're all present. Uh, looking for a motion to approve our agenda. So second. First and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Yeah, passes. Now we're looking for a motion to approve the minutes from our previous meeting, November 2nd. Also moved. Looking for a second. I'll second it. Jack. We have a motion and a second. All in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Those opposed? And that passes. Uh, any public comment, John? I have none. And then you're up with the budget update. Okay, um, I handed out a few things. First thing we'll start with is the budget to actual sheet. Um, and you can kind of go through that, see what, uh, see where we're at. This uh, is through the end of October is the latest one we have so far. They usually do them about the 10th. So we're always, our meetings are just before a new one. Um, but um, it's just good to go through like uh, on the first page of this about uh, about in the middle where it's the uh, recreational fees there. Um, there's the forestry fund equipment one. We normally budget about 200 bucks in there because uh, that's just when they rent out the equipment out at Hartman Creek, uh, the tree planters and stuff. Mm -hmm. We get the revenues from that because those are our tree planters and whatnot. So um, yeah, and then I was looking at that, I was like, what's this 69,000 awesome. something or another here, you know, <laughs> and that's a cost out of there. So uh, that is uh, something got miscoded uh, and sure. it was a snowmobile ATV advance uh, that we paid to the clubs um, for whatever reason, it got charged out of that account versus this snowmobile account where it should have been taken out of. <laughs> so um that's why we do review these things. <laughs> so something goes screwy like that. So if you look at the revenue column there, it looks like we're, you know, 26,000 in a hole, but it's we're really not. So uh, we're actually should be pretty darn close to, well, over a hundred percent on our revenues um, for the year. So um, that's, that's good. Um, and then uh, just for, for reference, the 83% is if everything was linear, you know, every month the same 83% would be the target uh, for the percent used column there. Uh, so you can kind of go through, I didn't see anything else that really jumped out at me on there. I mean, we're doing good in other places and, you know, and Ann's got the tough job of trying to figure out towards the end of the year where we're at with our repair maintenance stuff. Um, we don't want to go over, but at the same time, you know, you want to try and get those things, you know, all the extra lawnmower blades and, you know, paper products and all that stuff. We buy that stuff at the end of the year. Um, so we try and get a little more accurate report towards the end of the year, just so we can spend our budget without going over. So are you having an issue getting things? Um, well, we haven't ordered anything yet. Uh, well, you've been ordering stuff, or but yeah, I mean, as far as the supply chain. Yeah, are, you know, are we keeping up? Are we going to have what we need when you guys need it? Yeah, we can get what we need. And I'm starting to see the prices kind of normalize too. So we saw the biggest price increases in um, early on in the pandemic with hand sanitizer and the nitro gloves. Um, and we use a lot of both of those so but those those items the hand sanitizer is back to normal and the gloves are a little elevated I don't know if those will ever really come back down but yeah we can get what we need um, without issue now good we're gonna get a whole bunch of toilet paper for next year <laughs> <laughs> yep that was dicey for a while but it's yeah. good <laughs> so if you see anything there um uh, 
that you got questions on, give me a jingle or whatever. Um, so that's that. Um, and then uh, the next little packet there is our that revenue sheet that Christy puts together. So you just can kind of see the trends and various things. Um, there again, nothing really uh, jumps out, you know, as uh, unusual there. Uh, where is the winter storage? Yeah, the winter storage, again, we're record year. Um, Pete managed to squeeze a few more items in there. <laughs> so um, it's just, uh, you look at it, uh, we're, we're doing pretty good in that regard. I think we should just skip all this other stuff and just do storage. It's our, you know, <laughs> I see in the newsletter that Mandy sends out, your stickers are available for boat landing sales. So. Yep. You can buy them for next year already. Yeah, yep, they're good. Good job. Yep. I'm pretty, oh. pretty impressed to read. We've that. been doing that for a number of years, and uh, it's been kind of popular, you know. And I, I do that too with like state park passes and stuff. I'll give those as presents to people I don't, you know, know what to get them, and you know, it's a good gift, especially if you know somebody that uses our landings. Uh, certainly buy them a buy them a bull pass. Bull pass. Bull you come early, you get the little numbers, and then they're super cool. You know, like look, I'm number five. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can say to the parks that we don't generate revenue. Yep. And that's how it was years ago. People would say, Oh, you guys just take money. I said, No, we don't. Yep. And then that last sheet is the uh the 2021 boat launch uh totals uh with the, the, the dailies on top. And then yeah, she adds adds in the annuals. So that's what we bring in from uh from the boat launches. So 70,000, roughly 68,000 something. Um, so you can kind of see, and it's kind of interesting to look, you know, at the weekly totals, you can kind of tell when the weather got nice, <laughs> you know, and the, the, you know, the revenue spiked during that. And uh, so, yeah, and, uh, and just, you know, looking back at the, at the budget to actual on that first page, you got the violations and stuff and her crew did, Wrote quite a few this year, um, so we we uh, got two hundred thirty four percent of our uh, expected. You know, so doing good, keeping track, of people. Uh, we're out there. So, so. Uh, I'm looking at the fairground camping. Um, that's quite the jump. <laughs> yeah. 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 The uh, uh, the majority of that was actually from a local carnival. And oh. it's a really convenient stopover for them, mm -hmm. for their personnel from when they're between uh, fairs right. or festivals or whatever. They know we're there. And they got a parking. <laughs> yep. Yep. And, and so. And, yeah, they stayed there for what, a week or two. They or were there two or three times over the course of the summer and they'd stay for multiple days with multiple and they'd use the entire campground. Yep. So. It's getting used. Perfect. So the revenue you drew in at Keller Park, that's basically just one camper at a time to get to that amount. Yeah. Yeah. There's no uh, no big groups or anything. That, right. But I mean, there's only five sites, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's quite a bit of money when you think about that. What does it cost for a site there? 20 bucks or more or less? Was it 15, I think? Because there's no... Uh, yes. There's no amenities there. There's no electric or anything. No, so that's what, yeah. I was just curious. So, yep. so if it's 15, then you're you're over 100 times camping yep. groups there, which is good. Because yep. yep. you got to go there anyway. It pays for the gas up there and back. Yep. So and, and the day use is is crazy up there. We were camping up at uh, Armor Jeans, and and I, I took a group of people that are from the valley. Hey, let me show you Keller Lake Park. It's just a hop, skip, and a jump away. So we went and spent the day at Keller's and, you know, playing around on the trails and, you know, swimming in the river and stuff. And the amount of people, it was just, it, it, you weren't packed in, but there was a lot of people milling around that yep. whole park. It was pretty impressive. When I was a kid, you can't believe how active that park was. And they put trout in there and you'd go around the lake casting for trout, catching trout. And there'd be like a camp all the way along that road, all the way through. There'd be 15 campers in there, really? and I'm sure I'm sure it was free camp. You know, sure, but it was you know, but that's a long time. Ago. <laughs> I was going to say we're 
So they campers are already buckboards. Then you know. So. What's that? Are they campers or are they buckboards? <laughs> it was a busy place, honest. I always get a kick when you roll in the Keller and there's the, the Amish school is over there. And there's like you know, 50 little kids running around all dressed up the same, you know. Yeah. It's just crazy seeing that, you know, that place just crawling with kids, you know. It's pretty cool. So yeah. So that's uh that was that. Uh, if anybody's got any questions, let me know. But I'm sure. Um, property. All right, Powers property. Just a uh, an update on the on the process there. I don't know if you want to touch on that with the uh, the brother uh, and whatnot. Yes. Yeah, so for us, that property um, it's winterized and shut down, and we've been working with the family. Um, Ken had one brother um, who was working on the you know. You package up an estate like that, and it's going to be a long process for their family. So we've been working with them. Um, we've also been working with some of the neighbors who had concerns about, well, now no one's there, um, and my property board is yours. How are we going to handle, you know, during especially during gun deer season, there was concern that they'd get trespassers and people that were trying to hunt in there, and there's no, um, that was one of the stipulations when we took over that property that there would never be hunting on that property. So we've got um, the driveway in gated off and sign saying that it's closed and also that there's no hunting. Um, and like I said, we winterized that the house for now um, and sh basically shut it down. So we'll still do um, snow removal so that we can get in there. Um, as we need to, and then as family needs to. As and I think we have to for fire yeah, purposes. And just and for that, and so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they can get emergency vehicle back there. Yeah. Yep. So. So what are the plans for? What are they going to do? What are you going to do with it? Well, that's the that's what uh, you know. I put this on there, you know, just so we can get a conversation started. It's it's not going to be something like, oh, let's just do this, you know. So. Um, originally, the plan was to make it into an environmental education center, kind of like Suez over there uh, by Sunset Lake or Mosquito Hill over by New London there. Um, but those are there now. Um, and uh, the school districts aren't crawling, you know, calling for something like that. Uh, so no, the, uh, the original intent of it, I think that ship sailed a long time ago. Um, and the Ken, the well, both the powers were kind of they kind of understood that that was different, you know. Now, um, we had um, the agreement we had with them, it was much more restrictive before. Um, uh, but a number of years back, we had them loosen that up a little bit so you could use it for recreation purposes. Before, it was solely just for educational groups and blah blah blah. And we're like, well, that's probably not going to happen, you know. So, um Unless something weird happens, I don't see that as part of the plan for that property. So we have some options. You know, I mean, um, there's it's a neat property. It goes through several different kind of uh, ecosystems or whatever. You know, you got some, you know, jack pine stuff, plainy, you know, jack pine barren kind of stuff up there. And then you've got, you know, all the way down to the river bottom and, and you got swamp area. And so it's, it's kind of the really nice hardwood stand out there. So there's a neat variety of stuff. Um, so trail system, you know, you can kind of make loops through there and, and you could do something. Um, when we've talked about trail systems here, you know, there's pluses and minuses to that. Some of the challenges though for that site are the buildings. You know, I mean, we've got this house, you know, and kind of a weird house. Um, what do we do with that? You know, now that, uh, you know, Ken and Luann are both gone, um, we, we always just kind of stand off. We didn't even want to talk about plans for that because I, I you know, we didn't want to make it look like we're trying to, you know, <laughs> hurry them along or anything, you know, so, um, what do we do with that? We've got this a number of years ago, we built a new shed for them. There was one garage was falling down. We were responsible for the building. So instead of 
replacing that garage and this other shed. We told them we'd build this one shed. That shed is nice. We built that for us, basically. You know, that's a, you could store a groomer in there. You could do, uh, you know, a bunch of different things with that shed. Um, but the house, I, I don't have an idea what to do with that thing. You know, if it was some, you know, cool little log cabin in the woods, you could rent it out or something, you know, I don't know, maybe you still could, I don't know. We haven't evaluated that. So I guess I just wanted to throw it out there and, and if, if people had ideas, uh, certainly. Well, we do a wet bank or a wetlands uh, mitigation bank like they're doing at um, Lakeview. 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 Well, Wouldn't you know, that, if that would generate money for the county. If you're familiar with the property, it's, you know, that cool hardwood stand yeah. is just before you go down into the river bottom, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't know how close into a river bottom you can do things to make wetland or whatever, but basically you got a big hill you're going yeah. up. So I don't know uh, what they're doing at Lakeview. They can kind of dig some holes here and there. All of a sudden they got wetland, you know. Uh, well, yeah, they have to break up the tile that yep. was put in there. But Casey was saying that they have different yeah. different types of trees and different uh, environments that, that qualify. So if, I don't know if we can just put it into that and say this, it's never gonna be touched. It's gonna be a, that part of that bank and then we'll just make the money off of it because you can still put the trails through and still do park things with it. It's certainly something to look into. Yeah. I mean, uh, you, you kind of set it aside and we're going to do that anyway. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't tell anybody else that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put a note to myself to talk to Casey to see what uh, if there's some guidance for that program yeah. somewhere that I can get. There should be some designation as to whether it is wetland or not. I'm not sure there's enough property there for it. Enough property. I, I mean, you should be able to know if someone somewhere DNR or someone has designated there's a wetland area in it. I'm sure there's some old maps around that would. Well, yeah. Well, there's, there's definitely there's quite a cost into getting set up into it. Yeah. Right. So we're fine. So. Yeah. Well, I guess we're talking I'm, millions of dollars out of that one over here, but when you look at the money we've got involved in already from the highway department. Yep. We'll recoup once we can sell right. off credit, but we're. Oh, yeah. And we're I, in big already. Just, yeah, and I think that's yeah. we're at that point where we have enough information from what you guys are already doing to say if it's worth it or not once we take a look at it. Yep. But I, I think it's one. Yeah, and that's the kind of thing, you know, like we, you know, look at different ideas if there's some way to do it. I mean, not everything needs to be developed, right? You know, I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with having some woods that people can go walk around in. I mean, I like the idea of having a even just a, a rough trail you can go around more once or twice a year, whatever, um, relatively low maintenance kind of stuff. But there's a possibility, you know, that it could be used for other, you know, a, a more intensive trail use, you know, for something, you know, I'm not gonna. Um, is there, how, much, how much land is there? It's like 104. Yeah, something. just over 100. Yeah. yeah. Good chunk. Yeah. So, and like I say, it's a, it's a neat property. We, we do, we have uh, gotten revenue off of that from timber sales. Um, there is uh, another issue out there is invasives. Um, and the that was one of the complaints we've gotten from the neighbors. Barberry? Yeah, there's uh, barberry and that's, that's autumn stuff. olive. Um, yeah. People familiar with that? Where I hunt close to town here, it's terrible. Yeah, I've got 140 north of 161, and it's not there, but it's coming north. It's it's terrible stuff. Yeah, and it's yeah. There's a there's a lot of it. Even the last time we had a forester out there, he's like, "Oh yeah, this is going to be a problem for you guys," you know. <laughs> and it's pretty intensive um, practices needed to be able to uh, eradicate. eradicate that stuff. And I throw quotes around that because you know. It's near impossible. You know? I got a friend that got into some stuff with some of the people we hunt with in South Dakota that work in the forest. 
and they said it would take care of it, and it came back here, and it didn't take care of it. Yeah. Just so you know, it's terrible stuff. Yeah, really tough. Yeah, most of that invasive stuff is there. It's a problem because it's really good at surviving. You know, that's right. That's, right. that's unreal. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so there's, you know, I mean, there's some benefit there because we have the forestry aspect of it. Um, we we have managed that in the past. The DNR helped us out with that. We did some uh, timber sales. Um, Thinnings. I, I would, when I walked back to the back cabin there the last time, someone was telling me that none of that uh, popple came back, but it was thick in there, you know. Um, so uh, it's it's good uh, for wildlife. It's good for uh, recreation type stuff, um, but everything takes a little input, you know. So I think we we need to do, and and it's not like we got to have the whole the whole master plan put together, we're gonna to do everything, bing, ding, ding, but we should at least focus on, it's kind of like victory, you know, we've got these things right in front of us that we've got to deal with, like the building, you know, the house and mainly, I mean, the little buildings, whatever, you know. Was the house, would it be salvageable or could you just take it down? Yeah. I mean, it, it, anything could be taken down, it just costs money, you know, it's just a matter of. No, but what I was thinking of is, if you if it was maybe done like just trails, just a you know not groomed trails or something, mm -hmm. is the house going to be a detriment? I mean, is there going to be people going in there and? It'll be a problem eventually. Yeah. If that if that gate is open and people can get back, I mean, already since Ken was gone, yeah, the word got out pretty quick. Well, yeah, people gone. were back in there in that house, you know, and uh, you know we talked at one point about doing you know, cross country ski and make it a kind of a destination spot for that and using at least part of that house is like a warming place or whatever, you know, but I don't know. I don't know uh, if that's worth the the cost that it would take to do that or or not. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's not, in my mind, it's another one of those scenarios where you question, I mean, there is a ton of options, a yeah. ton of opportunity. It's a matter of how much money you want to spend. Like yeah, for, for, in, oh, for, you know, what that user group and, you know, how, how much use will justify how much we do. And I mean, sure. all the things that we're talking about, someone will, will benefit for sure. And I mean, there, if you kept the building, um, it's in a location that is not really that far from the chain of lakes as a vacation rental it would get used but to get it to the point where it could be used uh, that's a different yeah. conversation so and then that's a whole nother ball game for us yes, you know then, then you're yeah we want to be landlords yeah you know? i guess i i don't i guess i don't like to go that way i wouldn't have rather keep it simple and get rid of the house and just you know just some trails through there so that's meant to be a park as well yeah, yeah so that park. people aren't you know destroying things because well ken and luann were very well known i mean they used to bring they'd go to the valley and get bread and stuff and bring it to the food pantry so i mean they were well known yeah you know and i didn't know ken that well or his family um but we went to the funeral there and it was interesting you know like all the I, it was all before I would been in this circle, you know, it was just like kind of, they threw some big parties out there and they're yeah. like, everybody knew when Ken was having a party, you know? <laughs> they, yeah, they were from Chicago originally. Yeah, they they yeah. knew a lot of people and they were very uh, well liked. They had backer tickets and the only games they went to was when the Bears played. Yeah. I had friends that got the tickets. Yeah, they, they... I was at a, in 1998, I was at a Pittsburgh, Green Bay game that were his tickets. No, <laughs> and they had those big uh, Saint Bernard dogs. Oh, the, they just drooled all over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he loved his dogs. His dogs. Were I know. Amazing. Well, I think there were Luann's maybe. Okay. Luann, Luann was the the dog lover. Luann so, was the one that had the. And, and you people took care of dogs right up till the end of them, pretty much. Yeah. He, he never quit. Um, yeah. Well, they uh, they were both really really nice people. Yeah. Yeah. I would say probably the hit of the funeral was the the couple that ended up with the last dog mm -hmm. there brought that dog to the funeral, you know, like, oh, yeah, that was, that was pretty cool, you know, Yeah. but those were his kids. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, 
there's there's a lot of opportunity there. And just like everything else we've got, you know, there's opportunity, there's problems, you know, there's, <laughs> you know, and there's, you know, how much do you, I mean, we've talked about a lot of things we've discussed recently, you know, like how, how many people are going to benefit versus the cost, you know, and, and so it's. Well, I think if you keep it simple, mm -hmm. I think it'll be okay because yep. otherwise, why would they leave the land if they didn't want something done with? Right. And that was what uh, when I, I sat down with Ken that time when we got that last agreement yeah. worked out, it was, you know, he wants to, he wanted to see people use yeah. the property. He doesn't want to see people destroying yeah. things, but he wanted people to come out and enjoy the place, you know. Yeah. Um, so in, in keeping with what they were hoping to see, you know, I, I think trails is a really good option. You know, I, I mean, just walking trails, you know, I mean, you could take your dog out there and run around. Yeah, it doesn't you know, have to be elaborate. Yeah, you know, because um, there's already a little bit of a system out there. I mean, the one field was converted to prairie at one point. It hasn't been maintained very well, but uh, there's still a lot of prairie species in there. Um, so I mean, there's a lot of opportunity to to make a loop that's that would be very pleasing, you know, if you were to just a couple loops or something, you know, to walk around. You'd you'd walk through low land up to you know some really spaced out park like uh, hardwood area. And it's pretty neat. Cross country doesn't cost much to have cross country trails in the winter. No, you know? if we established a trail, it, in my mind. The work goes into establishing the corridor. So when you do that, do it so that you can make it acceptable for a number of different activities. And that's certainly possible. And the maintenance, if you're talking about a trail that we're gonna go out and mow a couple times in the warm season, well, then it's prepped for the winter season too. And then later down the road, if you want the option to have a groomed trail, it's there. So, I mean, I think the first issue we should look at is get some options for getting rid of the house because yeah, that's, I think so too. that's just a, a trouble magnet, yeah. a, a vacant house. There are, those, there are three or two finished log cabins on that property and one unfinished one, two. Did so they build them? They, those were WCC projects. Oh. Roger set that up, right? Yeah, those are old. Yeah, it's a shame, you know, it's another one of those things like, you know, we didn't want to throw a bunch of money, especially that number two cabin, because I mean, they, they did a lot of work. It's got a little loft in there. It's pretty cool looking, but the roof is rotten off of it and it's just it's falling apart, you know, because there's no use for it. Right. You know, we had always talked about, you know, fixing that thing up and putting a wood stove in there or something and you could rent that out as a rustic cabin or something you know and i don't know if you can still do that anymore and then you're in the yeah landlord yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not interested in that yeah. yeah so i mean we've got some buildings we got to look at you know so i mean the big one is the house you know what's going to happen with that um i think in the spring or summer or whatever, we need to go out there and you guys need to check out the second floor of that place. I really want to, I, I want to get up there. It's like they built this whole, it's like a whole other house upstairs, the bedrooms and kitchen and all that stuff, but they never used it, you know? So it's like straight out of the seventies, <laughs> you know, the avocado fridge and everything. <laughs> so is there, is there a parking area? Like if we start, making trails is, or is that something else we're going to have to establish a, out there there's a pretty big clearing you know it would have to be established as a you know you'd have to dig out the topsoil and limestone but in front of the whole house there especially if you took the house down you would have a yeah a bigger area you know they had originally proposed another area as you go up they have a very long driveway about probably halfway up the driveway. They had envisioned at one time a parking area in this. Uh, how long is the driveway in from the road to the house? Is it like a quarter mile? Yeah, it's it's long. Long. It's yeah. Long. yeah, it runs through a whole 40 diagonally and then and then drops down to where the house is. So yeah, it's uh yeah, I think we need to go out there, you know, when it's nicer out and uh, and not just kind of not today no <laughs> just put some eyes on it it'll be a little chilly in there today but uh 
put some eyes on it and you know you can kind of see the challenges there um and yeah uh there that area i think you're talking about is where they had logs piled they decked a bunch of logs there that last time they i think as you're coming in it's on the left no nope. kind of big opening yeah it'll be on the right oh hmm. Oh no, right. That's what I'm thinking. I'm looking at it backwards, but um, I can't remember. But anyway, there's a there's an area out there, flat field. That would make sense because then you're coming into it, you kind of get off, and then you explore the rest. You know, bike, foot, whatever you're doing. You know. Well, did they say anything that about the house? I mean, we would like to keep the house, or you can do what you want with the house. Would the they express any wishes? Didn't have anything on that. You know, they. Uh, I don't think it's written in. No, way. they. I mean, that all became anything solid became property of the county. So oh, okay. It was, it was county property since they donated. I <clears throat> just listen to that. I don't have a problem with getting out of the house, but take a lesson from Waywega before you think about doing that. Have it inspected. We okay. paid. We paid seventeen thousand dollars for a house, and we went to get permit. The fire department burned down. Cost us fifty four thousand dollars to take this bus. So that's just not oh. that wouldn't surprise me. It's yeah. pretty old. That's what yeah. I'm saying. That was an old house that we burned, and uh, well, that's a good idea. Yeah, at least, like I said, I don't have a problem taking it down. Yeah, make the park beautiful, but well, the good part is a lot of it's blocked go through that house <laughs> yeah, before you talk about tearing it down. Right, and, and yeah, we got to get the estimate on that. Ceiling tiles and the ropes. You know, there's a there's a bunch of SWAT teams that would love to use it, <laughs> as you can do your um, woodland approach. You know, using your compasses and everything to get to the place, and then I mean, it'd be perfect. But <laughs> that's like <laughs> the kids be, would love that too. Like just <laughs> before, right? Yeah, but it's just like just before you. We knock it down if that's what we end up doing. That's when they would want to let them come in and shoot it up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> break down the doors. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I mean it's a, it's an interesting place, um, but you know, without us sticking a ton of money into it to get it up to the level where you would rent it out, and then do we want to get into that business? I don't know. I don't know. Right. It's a whole other industry there, <laughs> you know. So, so I think that's a pay grade above you people who don't even order have to grow it. I don't see that happening. Oh yeah, I mean, there's a there's a whole process there, you know, and and you know, other counties have done really well with renting out houses. I don't know how they they ended up getting houses on a lake or something, you know. Like if we ended up with a couple houses on a chain or something, you know. I forget which county that was. I, I think I forwarded it to you one time. Uh, oh, I, it's um, Wash, Washington County. I Washington. Think? Was I it, think it was so. down yeah. in that corner yeah. there. They they came and presented at the uh, Park and Rec conference, um, and it was like they that was a huge revenue thing for them. You know, I mean, they had to you know retool. They had to. Yeah. I think they basically we got on the chain those for. Well, that's yeah. what I'm saying. You know, they dollars a week was yeah. small. I mean, they have, that, would, that would be worth the effort. Yeah. Yeah. In my mind, when you're saying, you know, maybe this isn't something we should get into, honestly, when I look at a comparison, the rentals that we have at the fairgrounds and when we did rent out the shelters at Camp Victory and even a campground, I mean, it's not that far off, mm -hmm. especially the rentals at the fairgrounds. We're going every single time a building is used, we are going through the building in a very similar way. There'd be, I mean, we have buildings that have refrigerators and kitchens. And I mean, yeah. what we don't have right now are sleeping quarters. Yep. I mean, we it's really, in my mind, it's really not that, that far of a stretch. I mean, it's not apples and oranges, but... You know, so I, that's what I'm saying. There's so many possibilities, you know, we don't want to just like, ah, no, right. you know, but because it's much harder to get a place after, I mean, to build one from scratch would be a lot more than to change something. I don't know. I don't find that house very pleasing to the eye. You know, it's not like, oh, that's a cool place, you know, um, in my mind. It'd be more, in my mind, it'd be more about location and mm. proximity to um, the chain of lakes. Mm -hmm. 
and in in the winter, even proximity to winter trail, Iowa yep. Sports Club, our trail, even it's location in consideration of the valley. So it's really not that far. Um, so we should really look at what condition that thing's in, you know? Yep, and that regardless the inspection, like you're saying, I mean, no matter what, that's going to be mm -hmm. for any of that, it's going to matter. Yep. Because, I mean, that could be something different, you know? I mean, we're always talking about it, offering different things. And, right. Um, but I, I think getting it inspected for lead and any other issues i think we that's something we should do sooner rather than later yep. and then that can sort of drive some of our other decisions i think i will make a note house inspected do we have money in the budget john that could allow it to happen what's an inspection cost i have no idea but um <laughs> Step one. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know, we can certainly look at it. And if it's, I can't imagine it's a ton of money. You know, I mean, they come in and they know what they're looking for, you know. Hey, <coughs> does the county have a billing inspector? What about zoning? I don't think they inspect the zoning. Zoning won't inspect the building, but. Well, they sure recommend everything. Yeah. We had, uh, I'm getting my ear burned every day when I'm asking for signatures. <laughs> we had, uh, that old train depot or whatever there in Ogdensburg um, that was, is actually owned by the state because they own that tomorrow River right away. But um, we were, we're the one that runs the trail. So it was kind of fell under our thing. Well, when we went to tear that down, we had to have uh, it checked for asbestos and everything. And I want to say some guy came out and just chipped some paint and he looked for lead paint and, uh, and then, scraped a few pipes or whatever that were still left out there and and then they sent it into some state lab to get tested and okay. came back good i know at one time we had a mold issue at the powers <coughs> we had that tested and it wasn't the the bad kind of mold i mean whatever um but that was it turned out that was a ridge vent issue the snow was blowing under the ridge vent and falling in and kind of getting too much moisture into the crawl space there. So I would I would think you could just gotta be somebody around here, yeah. building inspector that yeah. would do it for you. And I the simple thing is they look at the shingles, what's on it for the roof is the shingle or the metal. Well the, the shingles, shingles will be have problem. been redone recently. Well they could be a problem, problem but in that house we had it was the paint, it was the putty in all the windows holes and the glass in the windows. It, it was a lot of, you know, the house was 100 years old. They raised five families there. Nobody had a problem. But all of a sudden, that buddy in that window was dangerous. <laughs> you know, you could have been further off to sell it for a dollar. <laughs> still got to tear it down, you know. Yeah. Still got your Somebody else use it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, when you, once you start busting it up, that's when it becomes a problem. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll look into that. Uh, so, like, step one is, you know, figure out something for those. The house for sure <clears throat> at least figure out you know how big of a time bomb we got sitting there i was very pleased with the uh the brother and his family there as they're working through the stuff that's left in there because ken had quite a collection of old paint and chemicals and all kinds of stuff there's another big thing <laughs> all the, the really the really good stuff from the good old days and uh they are taking care of all that stuff for us. So, I mean, they're taking that with them. So I'm like, keep it up. <laughs> well, they're still working in there. Yeah, it'll be a while. Well, there's nothing we can do at this point. Really. No, and uh, we told them there's no rush either because, you know, they, they're they not spring chickens either. You know, they don't want to be out there when it's 90 below either. So they, they asked if they could come back, you know, later when the weather gets a little nicer and get the rest of the bigger stuff out. But if you give them the house and two acres around it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. want it as a family heirloom, and we yeah. off the hook. Yeah. So that's uh that's what we got for the Powers property. Unless anyone else has anything. 
Gil's Landing. So I'll just uh, start that off. Um, Pete, you had asked to put that on there just so we could get a discussion going last time. Um, and I talked to uh, Jeremy with the city. I was kind of hoping that they would point me to some individual that's really interested in donating money, but they didn't. Um, anyway, um, we'll keep it on a secret. Yeah, <laughs> I sort of figured that. Yeah, you know, everybody owns milk in that cow. So um, we, uh, I talked to the state about grants and stuff. Um, it, it's prime for a grant. We'd probably get a grant, a 50-50 grant, if we applied for it. But we don't have anything in the budget for 2022 for matching funds for that. So, so when when does the grant process start? When I think that one that one you could do multiple times a year, but I think the first one is in like April. I think so. Most of the state grants are like April 15th or something right around there. So um, we could apply for it. Um, and if it works like the last few times the state has done stuff, they keep, they're supposed to approve everything in July, you know, and then you theoretically in the fall, you can do your project, but um, there's usually a two year span on those things. Uh, so if we wanted to, I could apply for the grant through the Wisconsin waterways. Um, and I'm guessing we would get at a 50% grant for the handicap access uh, doc, but then we would have to budget for 2023, the matching funds. And then it would be spring of 2023, we would actually do it. I, I don't know, Jack, you weren't at the last meeting, so. Yeah, I, I read a minute on it. I, I, after we did our doc, that was by far the biggest question that came up was, where do we get out? Right. And uh, I went down there several times. Talked to you about it one time. There's there is that old boat launch there, which county owns, so we wouldn't have to purchase property. But then again, the more you think about that, the river is fast. You want to handicap people in a canoe trying to launch there, or vice versa. Where else could you go with that? Because the rest of the land around the corner. Is privately owned. I, I frankly can't imagine somebody selling some land down there to, right. you know. Uh, it's a fantastic idea, and I really believe it's got to be done. And I, as far as costs, we know pretty much what it's going to cost because the city just paid for it. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Greensway, I'm sure it'll give you a grant. Yeah. I'm sure DNR would. And I probably think it's not as much money as what you think. Uh, with grants, of course, right. but uh, the dock was right around thirty thousand dollars. So basically, all we'd have to do is do a little bit of launch approach and landscape around it. Yeah, I think the city one hundred seventy thousand, but we did the whole park and the whole yeah, road. Right, you know? right. Yeah, I mean, we were looking at more of that thirty to thirty-five thousand ish. You know. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that time that would probably be right. Because there really isn't much that would need to be done to tie that in to the, our parking lot. Right. You know, just our, uh, a little trail. Our blacktop trail costs fifty thousand dollars alone. Yeah, you sure. wouldn't have to do that. Right. Right. You know, yep. just all the landscaping we gotta do. It. Yep. So so I've never used one of those. Um, would it would the water speed really make a difference if you're if you're no, probably not. I it might actually help getting onto that thing, you know, if you were to yeah. you know, up right. Yeah, if you lined up. it lined up with it and just kind of yeah. you know it kind of push you up on there and yeah, it's kind of automatic. Yeah, I mean, yeah. both ways. Yeah. When you're ready to go out, you push the levers and out you go, and when you come in, float up on it and pick you right up again. So yeah. I've never taken out on one of those, but putting in was pretty awesome. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so I think it's just a matter of where do we place it in the property that we are? I, I, you know, that, that makes did you it, ever look at, you know, where I'm talking the old yeah. uh, launch there? Yeah. The, the ramp and that is still there, but it's been so overgrown and so long because that used to be the boat landing. Okay. Which one are, where are you talking about, Jack? Is right that like Gill's landing door? Okay. Right there is the, yep. the launch. Yeah. And then when they redid the park that time, they did the, uh, the front end of it, they moved it down a notch. So, but the old one is the old ramp and everything is still there. And I, and it is called uh, county property, yeah. but 
basically, if you'd moved it down a little bit to get away from the so close to the tavern, mm -hmm. you'd you'd have to cut a hole in a new wall, a seawall there. Well, but. we were looking at a spot. People are using it already. They're mm -hmm. trampling the vegetation. They got it basically a path opened up. Just I don't know. He's not even halfway. It's probably about a third way between where the where the bar takes out there and where the seawall starts. There's a there's a spot between a couple big trees where it'd be yeah. a perfect spot yeah. to put it. You know that, that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. <clears throat> so that would that would work. I mean, I would talk to zoning. They don't want the dock part's fine because that's in the water. That's DNR's issue. They won't even let us put a sign in there. <laughs> Because <laughs> we can't even put a post in the ground, yeah. You know, because they said it's a oh H uh, and H study, all that same. They're no different than a boat ramp. You got a permit for a boat ramp, but the same thing is you have to have a launch ramp. Yeah, well, and that's what I'm saying. We can do the dock thing and and the accessory path to that, but we asked to just put a sign on the bank there saying take yeah. out or whatever. And it was, no, they had told us we should put a post in the water, <laughs> which seems dumb because then it's going to get wiped out by the ice. Yeah. Um, but you put a buoy in the river spring and put it in the spring and take it out in the fall and say take out on the buoy or take, uh, I just, you got to run that about the buoys. Yeah. I think that would be just a DNR issue, but yeah. I don't see why they would. I, I think we just hang a sign on a tree for now. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. I go up the river and it says no wake starts here, and then you got a couple more no wakes. And yeah. but I, I think you get around that sign to you know, zoning. Well, I think John's point is that if we clean it up, you won't need a sign, right? And you know, with the dock there, you wouldn't you wouldn't need. You'd still want to have a sign just so people. Are, oh yeah, okay. But <laughs> zoning's got books and books of rules, but they don't have a book of common sense. <laughs> <laughs> we won't get into running that yeah. down, but uh, yeah, I just. I was kind of irritated after I made the request and everything, but uh, there's trees there too. We'll hang a sign off a tree if we got to, you know, <laughs> you know, like that. That's there, you know. So, so um, the access, and I, I haven't been down there or anything. To speak of especially where you're talking about uh, the access. Now we're talking. This is a handicap situation. Do we have the parking close enough by? Do we have the, mm -hmm. the trail you're talking to? The dock is going yeah. to be accessible. Yeah. 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 I mean, very yeah. accessible. Yeah, yeah. it's that. it's about and then, perfect. And then where do we get? Pete mentioned before. We're okay. Say we do this, and all of a sudden people are coming, which is great. I think we we need that here. Where do we get out? <laughs> If we go downstream, is there a this place is, downstream where we know that it would be a destination for them somewhere where we could actually do something similar on the other end so we could show that we're providing for our disabled citizens? Well, well, right now we're just trying to let them get out if they launch in Waiwega. The, right. the downriver part, I don't know if the county owns anything. Because you get the next spot would be the river. Three miles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, we're just trying to go down there. We're just well, trying to collect up all the people well, that Jack's dumping in the river. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's good. laughs> so I think that's where we start. And if and if it grows uh, like I think it might, then that's when we start tapping uh, some of the <clears> private <throat> people saying, hey, you guys. But there's there's no driving beyond those end cottages. That's, no. That swamp all the way. Yep. Yeah, right banks. Yeah, well, and there's there's it's a whole different experience once you round that corner right. onto the main wolf. You know, uh, yeah. there's big boats and people zipping around. It's a it's intimidating if you're in a little kayak or something. That's what I was going to hey, say. Yeah. Two years. I fish hard, yeah. and I think last year I never fished out of the no wake zone except if I drifted by the Jennies a little bit. It's that uh, crazy all the yes. time. Now. There's that many boats, yeah. and I call a lot of fish. But you got to stay in the no wake area. Yeah. You put the fish down and on those motors wide open. People yeah. don't realize that. Yeah, you go yeah. wide open down the river. You're not gonna catch any fish. That stuff. They we had that. the kids in the kayaks, and I was like just trying to herd everybody. Get over <laughs> my shore, you know. Don't go wandering out in the middle. Cause yeah, but when you got all no wake there, you're coming down the Wapaka River from Jack City and. It's all the way no way to that spot, so yeah. it should not be a boat problem. Right. Oh no, on that whole stretch until you turn that corner onto the right. main wolf That's to right. get to our landing. Yeah, there, you're fine. You know, so and I think if we put put it basically, Kevin, if you were to drive your car off the off the road into the parking lot and into the river straight. Okay. That's where the landing is. Oh, so it's so, right there. Yeah, it's right, right there. Close up further, John, how close do we own to that tavern? 
right up to the door, isn't this it? Like, yeah. like, I, I knew that. See, it's like yeah. about five feet. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So that's that's all ours. Yeah. Yeah. And didn't you talk to that guy or somebody who talked to the I guy? Did, yep. And you know, they were. I mean, that would help them too. You know, if we, you know, I don't know how much he's going to open that anymore. Yeah, you, you can't worry about him. He's got it for sale. He's going to close it. He just yep. Yeah. So I mean, they would be willing to work with us. I'm I'm a hundred percent positive. If we put a dock out there, they would be using that too. You know, so yeah. yeah. Um, he he rents out kayaks. Yep. Remember, oh. I told you how he uses his truck to go down our <laughs> handicap trail. So yeah. <laughs> he rents them out. He'll use it. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, as far as if we were to try and put something right there, or if we put it down the river a little further where we were talking, um, it it don't really matter. That would get used. I like the idea of it being down just a little further, just because then there's the chance to separate those mm -hmm. two groups. You know. I agree with that. Because I, if I was coming down there, I would feel like, I mean. If I didn't know where the bar was and all that, I'd feel like I'm on private property there. Yeah. Where if I came down a little further, then yeah, okay, I'm in the public. I'm going to check that out today. Yeah. So that's a better idea. Um. So. So I think apply for a grant. I think so. so what are the grants? Because <laughs> yeah. we got the greenways thing yep. or whatever too. Waterway greenway. And then. Realistically, by the time the grant process gets all filtered out, you know, we'll be most of the way through next year, and and then, and if we find out who Jack's secret Santa is, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he's not going to tell. Yeah, he's not telling. <laughs> like, oh, we're working on him for another project. <laughs> we'll put a sign down at Jack's Landing. You know, like, oh, wouldn't it be nice if there's a place to get out? <laughs> that's not debatable so I, um i think that's enough work for you on that don't you think John? yeah yeah i can i can do i can roll with that and then i'll work with the city too a little bit get their well all their information about the dock that they put in yeah so. we bought the dock right out here and i would tend to yeah. yeah. all fit there yeah. right? so i mean it's it would be neat to have the same thing pretty yeah, much, you yeah. know, except for maybe the approach idea. to it. Yeah. So yeah. people are familiar on both ends. So, so now we're down to supervisor reports. Anybody go to anything that they want to bring up or uh, project updates? Well, Ann, you want to run with that one? Sure. Uh, first one on here is the fairgrounds track changes. Um, that is buttoned up for this season. The uh, tractor pulling lanes are in rough in um, enough that they were happy with letting them set to settle under the snow um, for the season. They'll be back next spring to do some work, um, doing some French drains along the sides and some finish work. Um, and then um, we'll see the the area of the actual um, oval track where they removed the clay the highway department was in and filled that back in with limestone. They just barely beat the buzzer on weather for that. Um, so we'll see in the spring how it looks and if there may be a, some amount of material that will still need to get um, put in potentially just around the covered area. Um, but we'll see about that. Um, County Forest, um, we did get a chance to flag in some of the new um, connector trails on the north side of the road there. Um, we didn't get an opportunity to get a start on the picnic shelter there. Um, just ran into gun, gun deer season and that's not where you want to be. <laughs> um, so um, that'll be a spring, spring project for us more than likely. Uh, Camp Victory, we did get out there and um, put some new robes on those little picnic shelters in the back. So those have got steel. The screened in ones? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those have got steel robes now. Cool. And we'll, we'll go back and do a little bit more repair on the actual buildings. Uh, they both need um, new steps to get up into them and the screens need to be repaired. That's all minor, minor stuff. And then uh, the trail up at Keller, um, I just barely got in there last 
last week to get the first section of the first segment of trail there flagged. So that'll be um, about a half a mile of trail um, that will go just from about from where the entrance is um, up and around behind the camp area and then back out to the road just after the camp site. So um, ideally the next phase of trail then would be a, uh, essentially a matching loop, a mirror loop to the south on the water side. So we'll have about a mile loop there. And then um, the thinking is to connect to that loop to the restroom playground area, kind of the middle of the park. And from there, um, take our existing trail down by the spillway and then connect a loop again, probably about a mile to the south where um, spillway is in our other piece of property. That'll be um, years from now when we get to that. And then as far as um, the other things we've got going, Seasonally, everything is shut down. Um, gates are closed, docks are out, that kind of thing. Um, we, right at the end of February, get, or February, November, get the opportunity to get out on the country club property and stake out where we will groom for the winter trail. Um, I was actually out there yesterday in the uh, Antarctic conditions. No. They, had, they the golf course was taking out some trees, and they wanted me to go look to make sure that it wasn't going to affect what we were doing out there. Um, but, so I restaked a few things, but we're essentially we're ready to go as as much as we can be until we get a little more snow. So, and um, we've got to start also on. Um, the general maintenance that we do. So we'll go through every piece of equipment that we have essentially and do oil changes and check everything over um, throughout the course of the winter. So um, our staff's got a good start on that too. Any questions? Okay, um, our next meeting is January 4th. Uh, do we know which room yet, John? Or <laughs> uh, we could more than likely this one, unless you want to do a different one. No, that's fine. It's nice. Um, looking for a motion to adjourn. That's Jack. That's Jack. Yeah. I'll move to adjourn. Okay. We have <laughs> right, Kevin. Jack. Yeah, Kevin. <laughs> Non-debatable. We are adjourned. <laughs> Uh, all right, it is 957. Let me turn this thing off here. We're still a little going. Pretty disgusting. Okay. Oh. Nothing we said, I hope. <laughs> no, Kevin, it wasn't anything we used. We're going to have to try and get some sit.